Hi friend, David here from Learn, Stage, Lighting, and Above AVL. And today, we're talking about one of those things over there, lasers. Let's dive in. You may have seen before, every, you know, about once a year for a few videos at least, we go ahead and we do a focus on lasers. Now, lasers in a stage lighting event are not for everyone, but when you get to a point where your rig is fairly saturated with lights, it can often make sense to add lasers, and we would love to be the people to provide that to you as you're gleaning education from us here. So... We've got, for example, I think we last updated in 2023, our guide to how to begin with lasers. That goes over the safety stuff, the basics you need to know to get started. Today, we're going to go practical and in our next video. And we're going to talk about how to actually use lasers in your event with lighting. Because I think there's something missing out there where a lot of laser tutorials, if you go online from our manufacturers, from other people, you know, not at too much fault to them, but kind of. They like to show you dark, black, empty rooms with lasers shooting. And the context that we want to use them in most of the time is an event where there's already stage lighting. There's probably some kind of band, worship team, something like that. And we want to add lasers in, not necessarily as something that's like a, a showstopper that just, you know, gets everybody, you know, gets the focus and just takes over the focus when it goes. But actually as another light fixture and as something that contributes to the look on stage through the haze, you pretty much have to have fog or haze to make lasers work because um, we're talking mainly about beam shows here, not projection. That's what we're going to do here. So let's talk about it. So from a technical basis, how do you get going with lasers? Behind us, you can probably see we've got two lasers going and I'm going to switch the camera really quick on us across these two lasers. On the on your left, uh, we have the X Laser Skywriter M2. These Skywriter lasers, oh, I'm just gonna grab my camera switcher here. The Skywriter lasers, they excel at being controlled from a lighting console like a light using a system called Mercury, and we're gonna demonstrate that here. Okay, the laser cubes, on the other hand, just look at look at the guy on the right right now are an app-based control, and they do technically have an ArtNet mode, but to be honest, it's not great. They excel in using their own app, and I'm gonna show you some ways that you can control that here today to make them part of your event. So whether you're a church looking to add something to your lighting that's gonna punch through, but not cost an arm and a leg, and really be able to do a lot, or maybe you're a band who says, wow, I wanna add something cool to my show, that's small, that's compact, that, you know, I can put in my car. It's not hard to transport, but it's going to give me a really big punch and add maybe to some basic or even really decent lighting that we already have. Then lasers are for you. So from a technical basis, what we need to do in today's video is talk about the setup. So the Skywriter, first of all, that we've got going on is Artnet or SACN based. It can take DMX as well directly. In terms of patching it, here in Onyx, we have it patched as a few fixtures. So first we have our master fixture that controls things like the overall intensity. Okay. You see that there, you can go ahead and move it. See, we can see it tilting there within its limits, go side to side as well. Perfect. And then we can adjust the scale X and Y and most importantly, enable it. It's basically a safety switch built in here to enable it on and off. Okay. Now let's look at the builders. So the builders in Mercury are what really make it work with X lasers stuff. So once you've kind of set up your basics in the master, it's time to go to the builders. The master can be used to kind of set up a safety zone as well, though I really like their program Accelerate for that. Just to give you a quick walkthrough, you go into the rig manager. It goes and it finds the lasers on your network. So just plug in a PC with your lighting console or what have you, run this. Okay. And then I've got my laser here. And what's cool is I'm actually able to adjust the safety area. So for example, this one is, you know, shooting up right now. If I leave it fully wide open, it hits some of the truss and bounces off of it. That's a dangerous situation, but we can create really complex safety zones here and they're automatically in the laser. We can also configure them um, completely 
in here and, and do some other setup things that are really nice. Apply. No, we can't apply firmware. That doesn't happen through here. Um, but this will tell us if our firmware is up to date or not. So great program for configuring and also connecting with visualizers in order to visualize lasers. So we started with our master. Next, we have our builders. Okay. So our builders allow us to select basically lights almost within the laser. So as I work with this, I'm going to show you the other camera actually. And so what we're doing here is I just brought on my first builder, but my second one, the green one's already on. And so the really neat thing about this is that I actually have like multiple light sources coming out of the laser. In fact, I think I can have up to eight and and what that enables me to do then is to put them on faders like I have here. And I can literally, you know, bring them up, bring them down, crossfade between them. Oops, but I have this one in the programmer. And crossfade between different looks on that laser, which is very, very cool. I guess I don't have anything on that one, so we'll go ahead and just pop in a little... Well, something. I clearly fumbled something, but that's okay. Oh, the intensity's still off. So I can go ahead, now that I've cleared that, and, you know, crossfade between two completely different looks of media, which would work better if I actually had console in front of me. I know there's one over there. Don't worry about it. Um, and because of that, I'm actually able, from a physical perspective, to get multiple looks and make it look like multiple moving heads, but it's only actually one laser, which is really stinking cool. Okay, let's talk about the rest of the technical setup. So the rest of the technical setup is the same as any other Artnet or SACN device. The only difference is you do have a safety switch with lasers. So I've got mine hooked up and it, with X-Laser, their safety switches are in line to your network DMX signal. So I've got my safety switch sitting right over here. I can press it. It takes the, the DMX coming out of this computer running Onyx or a console, goes into the safety switch, then the safety switch goes to the laser. And there are also ways for you to do multiple lasers in the same way. You can come out of the first laser into the second, the third. You can even do multiple safety switches. So that's a bit of the technical. We're just going to broadcast this out on Artnet or SACN. The laser listens, and you're pretty much good to go. Now... X-Laser lasers do start counting their ArtNet universes at zero. Programs like Onyx, sometimes, well, Onyx all the time, starts counting their ArtNet universes at one because it's not standardized. So keep that in mind. I have my laser set to universe one, and I've patched it in universe two in Onyx, and everything works dandy. The other thing to be aware of is, in Onyx, since version 4.8, when they went to the new fixture library type, the profile doesn't work quite right. But X-Laser has an old profile that you can load and be good to go. All right? So that gives you a lot that you're able to do. And that's where lasers can really do more than a light. Because within each builder, for example, we actually get two groups. So we get two different colors. So right now I've got them both set to white. But if I make one of them blue, my second one, first one's white. And then I go back over here to color. I can adjust this. And now you may be able to see, maybe hard to see. Let's go ahead and make this one red. That I've got a two color thing going on across the go across the light itself. And in the beam, there are these circles and they're half red and half blue. Really cool and something that you can't do with a regular light. Okay, let's talk about the laser cubes now. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this guy off real quick. So the laser cube, the one that's flashing green right now, they work with a program called Laser OS. You can use the inbuilt Wi-Fi on the laser cubes themselves, um, but I really, really prefer to wire them. Obviously, in any sort of event type situation, you want to make sure you always have control. If this laser loses control, of course, for safety reasons, it's just going to black out. So I really recommend going wired with it. Um, it's very simple. It can be a DHCP server or you can connect it to an existing network and then get full control through laser OS, turning it on here and then working with everything in here to make exactly what you need come out of the laser. Um, there's a lot of things in here that are more oriented to projecting on surfaces, 
but a lot of them look good as beams and in including all of these beam show presets that really give you a lot to work with to make some really interesting things, especially once you start applying effects on them. Okay, so that's about how Laser OS works. You can trigger Laser OS, and I think that's a big part of running a show and something we're going to do here. So, for example, I've brought over this new Maze DMX MIDI controller that they sent, and we recently did a review on Lord and Stage Lighting Gear, and if it's not out yet, it will be soon. Okay, really cool. Don't get paid anything to share this with you. In fact, we don't even sell them, so, you know, uh, maybe in the future. But it's just, it's really cool. And so I can take that, and if I go to my settings here, I'll go to MIDI, and I'll choose my MIDI port, and they did change this a little bit, so hopefully it still works. There are templates for the APCs in here, but then what I should be able to do is just click on any of these, go ahead to sign hotkey, go to MIDI or both enabled, which is cool. And then I should just be able to hit a key. Yep. And now it brought me that key is going to bring up this particular item. So just to check it, we'll go back. We'll hit the key. As you can see, it goes right to it when I hit the MIDI control. Through MIDI control, we can also set up the ability to control the overall power. Okay, so that's super helpful here. So in this case... I'll just go ahead and say link to MIDI knob. Okay, a knob just being probably, I think, a 0 to 100%. All right, yep. And now I put that on the first fader of the Maze DMX just by moving it. And now I've got full control of this laser right there. So that's the technical. As you can see, using lasers in your events can be really, really awesome, and it can add a lot to it. If you're interested in any of these lasers we talked about, of course, we're dealers for all of them, over at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. We didn't cover the Pangolin or Quick Show type lasers because they're covered really well elsewhere. And honestly, for Beam Show type stuff, I think the control options between the Skywriters or for DMX based stuff or the Laser Cubes for app based stuff just really kick butt and make it kind of a no brainer. So if you need a laser, if you're looking for one, feel free to go over to Learn Stage Lighting Gear, buy them. It helps us out, helps us make stuff like this. And if you have any questions, of course, you can use our contact form over there or add some stuff to your cart. Go to checkout and add them to a quote. Request a quote. We love to help people find the best in gear and help you get it. So we'll do that. And then in our next video, we're going to talk about the artistic side of using lasers with your lighting and how to really make it mesh with lighting in a really cohesive manner. We'll dive in there. Thanks.